Right, welcome to lesson number two. We're going to look at using long division to divide a polynomial by a binomial. And uh, you're going to have to remember some of the terminology that you learned in uh, probably grade four or something. But um, the, main, the main terms to remember are the dividend, the divisor, and the quotients. So if I'm looking at this, this example up here, then uh, uh, 15x cubed minus 10x squared plus 5x, that's going to be my dividend. The divisor is, is 5x. So the divisor is the one that is going into the number being being divided. And uh, and so if I were to break this down, 15x cubed, if I wanted to uh, actually solve it, then uh, I would divide 5x into each of these separate terms. And in this example, it's nice because it's it's all going to be uh, it's going to go into the uh, the polynomial exactly and evenly. So there will, will be no remainders left over. And so 15x cubed divided by 5x, 10x squared divided by 5x, and then 5x squared divided by 5x. Um, what we're going to be left with is 15x cubed divided by 5x would be 3, 3x squared. 15x cubed, or 10x squared divided by 5x, uh, and it's, it's a minus, is going to give us 2x. And then 5x divided by 5x is going to leave us with positive 1. Now, if I look at this example above, remember that we said the dividend, the dividend was 15x cubed um, minus 10x squared plus 5x, and the divisor was 5x. So if I look at this next example, 20 divided by 3, then my dividend is going to be 20, and my 20, and my divisor is going to be 3, and then the quotient, that's what the, the answer is. Just like up above here, the quotient was 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. My quotient is going to be 6, but now I'm going to have a remainder. So 20 divided by 3 would be 6. 3 times 6 would be 18, and we would have 2 left over. Now this is also going to be the case with, with, some, of our, uh, with some of our polynomials. And we're going to look at, at using um, these following expressions in order to discuss what it, what it actually means when we have a remainder given that we have a, we're have we working with a polynomial. So let's look at this long division expression um, that is as shown as the example here. Uh, we're working with 739 divided by 35. And so just like when you, you learn in uh, middle school, 739 divided by 35, well, first thing we do is look at the 73 divided by 35 would be 2 times, which would leave us with 70. We would subtract 70 from 73 and we would be left with 3, and we would bring down the 9, and we'd see how many times is 35 going to 39 just once. 1 times 35 would be 35, and we'd have 4 left over. And so that's how it's being expressed here and here, is we have our, div our dividend, which is 35, or sorry, our divisor, which would be 35, our dividend, which is um, 739, and then we get our quotient, which is 21 and then our remainder that's left over. And that's in the form that we're given up top here. So let's look at the next one. We have a, a dividend of 5,773, and that's being divided by our divisor, which is 25. Now 25 goes into 57 two times to give us 50. We subtract those, those two elements, and we get 77. 25 goes into 77 three times, which we would get 75. Bring down the 3 and subtract these terms, and we get 23. How many times does 25 go into 23? Well, 0 times, and 0 times 25 would be 0, and so we have 23 left over. If we were to write it like this, then I start with my dividend, 5,773. And that is going to equal my divisor, which in this case is 25, multiplied by my quotient, which is 230, plus our remainder, which is 23. Now, if I wanted to express it in this, by this term here, then I, all I would have to do is divide everything by the uh, the divisor, so divide everything by 25, 
that would leave me with 5,773 divided by 25 is equal to 230 plus 23 over 25. All right, next let's look at uh, example number two, where we're look, working with the long division of polynomials. Okay, so x squared plus 3x plus 18 divided by x. Notice how my, uh, my dividend is is uh, is still where we would expect it to be if we were working with a, a regular long division question. But when we're working with polynomials, it's exactly the same. My divisor is in the exact same position as it was before, and and so is my quotient up top here. And we we take it one step at a time. So how many times is x going to x squared? Well, it goes in x amount of times, which would leave me with x squared plus three x. How many times does x go into 3x? Well, it goes into the x, or it goes into 3x three times. And so 3 times x would be 3x. If we subtract those two terms, I'm left with 0, and I bring down the 18. How many times does x go into 18? 0 times. And so what we're left with is, is positive 18. Now, when we're writing it like, like this, then remember that my, divide, my dividend is the first term that I'm going to place, so x squared plus 3x plus 18, and that is equal to my, my dividend, which is x, multiplied by my quotient, which was x plus 3, and then we add our remainder, which is 18. So that's what that would look like. Uh, next thing, and here with this next with this next question, notice how I have a positive 0x squared. The reason we have that is because when we're working with a polynomial with, with uneven degrees, so notice how it jumps from x cubed to x and there's no x squared. That sometimes makes it challenging to actually divide um, two terms into. When there's just one term, sometimes it, it, well, it actually doesn't really make a difference. But let's look at this. So how many times is x going to x cubed? It goes into x cubed, x squared times. If we multiply these two terms, we're left with x cubed. If I subtract them, I get 0. Bring down this term, 0x squared. How many times does x go into 0? Again, 0 times, 0x. How many times does x go into negative 5x? Well, it goes into that negative 5 times. So x times negative 5 would give us negative 5x. Now, negative 5x minus negative 5x where actually becomes positive 5x, so that would be 0. Bring down the 6. It's positive 6. How many times does x go into that? 0 times again. So I would put it into this form, and the first thing I need to start with is p, which is actually my dividend. So x cubed minus 5x plus 6 is equal to my my divisor, which is x in this case, multiplied by my quotient, which is just going to be x squared. We can forget about that term. x squared minus 5, and then our remainder, which is positive 6. All right. So I'll let you do this question on your own. It's, it should be pretty straightforward at this point. Um, but let's look at this question down here. I have... I have y cubed minus 6y plus 20, and I want to divide it by y minus 3. And then I want to express it in, in this form, which won't be a problem. But let's begin with where we start. So if I have, um, I need to start by writing out my dividend, which is y minus y cubed. And if I'm going to be, notice how I skip a term, just like I did in this example here. And when, I, when that happened, I had to add the 0 to 0 y squared. So we're going to add 0 y squared, but then we're going to carry on with negative 6 y plus 20. And we're going to divide that by y minus 3. So the first thing, how many times does y minus 3 go into y squared, y cubed plus 0 y squared? Well, that's going to be y squared. So it goes in y squared amount of times. If I multiply y minus 3 by y squared, I'm going to be left with y cubed minus 3y squared. 
and I subtract those terms. Remember, I'm bringing down that negative 6y. Um, if, if I'm subtracting negative 3y from 0, I'm actually adding it, right? So that's going to become 3y squared, so plus 3y squared. Now, how many times does y minus 3 go into 3y squared minus 6y? Well, that would be um, plus 3y. If I add 3y, I'm going to be left with 3y squared. 3y multiplied by y minus 3 is going to be minus 9y. And again, I'm subtracting these terms. I'm left with 0 here. But negative 6y minus negative 8 so negative 6y, or negative 9, so negative 6y minus negative 9 is, is negative 6y plus 9y. So we're left with 3y and plus 20. Now how many times is y minus 3 going to 3y plus 20? Well, that goes in 3 times, so plus 3. And uh, what we're going to be left with is y minus 3 times 3 is 3y minus 9. And 20 minus negative 9 is going to be 29. That's left over. So when we write this out, what we're going to be left with is we have to start with, um, with this guy over here. y cubed minus 6y plus 20 is equal to my... Uh, my quotient this time and so remember the quotient is the actual answer that you had so y squared plus 3y plus 3 plus 3 and not the remainder uh, but we will still, still include that plus 29 but then we're dividing it by the uh, the divisor. So divide by y minus 3 and divide that by y minus 3. Okay, so with questions like this, it's really important that you remember what P, D, Q, and R stand for. Alright, if you, if you get those mixed up, then that's when these, uh, these questions really become challenging. But other than that, if you're remembering what each of those terms are, then it's it's actually not too too challenging. Alright, next we're going to look at uh, um, the division algorithm. So when a polynomial, if, and if we refer that polynomial as p of x, is divided by a polynomial d of x, there exist unique polynomials, q of x and r of x, such that it gives us this form. And if you look at that, that's really similar to uh, what we looked at earlier, but this is just written in function notation. All right, let's look at an example. The first thing we want to do is write this polynomial in descending order of powers of x. So we want to start with the highest power of x, so p of x is equal to 6x to the power of 4 plus 5x cubed minus 4x plus 1. So in descending power of order of the powers of x. So I started from the from the top and then I worked my way down. The next thing I want to do is divide by uh, 2x minus 1. And so we're going to have 2x minus 1 divided by 6x to the power of 4 plus 5x cubed. Notice how I'm, I'm skipping square, x squared, so I'm going to add 0x squared minus 4x plus 1. All right. Let's take a look at this. And what we're going to do is, is take it two terms at a time. So I want what I'm going to say is how many times does 2x minus 1 go into 6x4 plus 5x cubed? Now with that first term, I, what, I'm, what I'm really looking for is this, uh, how many times does 2x go into 6x4? Now when I do that, I'm, I get 3x cubed, and that would give me 6x to the power of 4. Because what we're really trying to do is is um, have these subtract to be 0. But if I multiply 2x minus 1, it's going to be 2x minus 1 times 3x cubed, which is 6x to the power of 4, minus 
3x cubed. And remember, if I'm subtracting a negative, I'm actually adding, so that would become 8x cubed. Bring down 0x squared. How many times does 2x minus 1 go into 8x cubed? Well, that's going to go in positive 4x squared, which would give me 8x cubed minus 4x squared. And again, we're subtracting a negative, so that gives us 4x squared. Bring down that negative 4x. How many times is 2x minus 1 going to 4x squared minus 4x? Well, if I add 2x, that would give me 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is going to give me negative 2x. Subtract, and then again I'm subtracting a negative, so I'm actually adding 2 to negative 4x, which would give me negative 2x bring down that 1. Negative 2x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 1. Well, that's negative 1 times, and that would give me negative 2x plus 1 with 0 remaining. And when we finish, we want to write it in the form of px is equal to dx times q x plus rx. And uh, so what, we, what that's going to look like is p of x is equal to d of x. So that, remember that's our divisor. It's 2x minus 1 times our quotient times 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. And since there is no remainder we can just leave it as that. And it would be better if I put double brackets around it. So is 2x minus 1 a factor of, of the above? Uh, yes, it is because there's no remainders. No remainders left over. All right, next question. Consider the division shown and state the divisor quotient and the remainder. Okay, so my divisor is going to be this one here, 2x minus 3. My quotient is x squared plus 4, and my remainder is negative 2. Uh, the next thing we want to do is, is use the division algorithm to determine what p of x is equal to. So remember that p of x is equal to d of x times q of x and plus r of x. So I have uh, my divisor, which is 2x minus 3, times my quotient, which is x squared plus 4. And we're going to add neg negative 2 to that. So 2x uh, times x squared is going to give us 2x cubed. 2x times 4 is going to give us 8x. Negative 3x squared negative 12 and minus 2. We're left with uh, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 14. And that's the value of px. So if I divide px by 2x minus 3, I'll have x squared plus 4 minus 2 as my quotient.